Matt Kuchar has got himself all wrapped up in controversy again, and that has brought up discussions on the spirit of the game. Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hey everyone, Aaron Stewart, Data Access Golf. Thanks for joining me again here on the podcast. Appreciate it very much. As we come into the new 2019-2020 season starting on Thursday. So we'll wrap this season up. Season one of Data Access Golf will be over and we will be firing up season two with some some changes. We've uh, beefed up the Facebook group. We're going to add some uh, stuff in there uh, to the private Facebook group. We'll have uh, more lives and different things going on in there starting this year, and we're going to build up that group. So that will be one of the points one of the points of focus. Also, the uh, app coming out soon. We've uh, revamped a little bit of the base of the benchmarks. That we'll be reviewing every Monday as part of our, our data review to see how folks are playing. So really excited for next season. Coming up here pretty quick, hopefully to do a lot just based on the numbers and some of the comments and things we've received from folks. We'll be doing a lot more interviews, maybe with some local pros, but also some um, amateurs that are trying to get better and see what they're working on. So sort of a, a little revamping, maybe a, a little change in direction perhaps, but we'll still talk a lot about uh, technology, about best practices for learning golf. Definitely going to get heavy into making sure that we can get our games better over the winter. I believe strongly that winter is really the best time to work on your game and then just enjoy the summer playing the game and then work on your game over the winter because you can do it in very small confined spaces. It doesn't matter if it's snowing outside you can really, really do a lot of great work on your golf swing in the winter. And uh, so we'll be sharing a lot about that going forward in the new year. But today I wanted to jump into something that um, it's kind of, it's something that's bothered me for a few, uh, for a few years. And it's sort of tied up in, you know, we got with the USGA and all the new rules and this, that, and all the other stuff that's been going on. And you know, the stuff that I thought was really great that they changed this year that I thought worked out really well. And then some things that, you know, that just didn't like, you know, the drop from the knee. And there were some things that just kind of seemed a little hokey. But for the most part, I would say that the new rules did a pretty good job. I mean, they really addressed some of the things that were quite silly in the game. But in particular, we, we had this um, episode or this um, situation with Matt Kuchar over the weekend at the uh, out at the European Tour, at the uh, Por Porsche Championship, I think it was, won by uh, Paul Casey, um, which, <laughs> I mean, let me, just for a second. So Paul Casey right now, if you look at the race for, uh, the, the race to Dubai, so Paul Casey is now 16th on that list, okay? Top 20. He's played... Paul Casey has played in eight, what they consider to be eight European Tour events. And let me just kind of tell you which these of what these events are. Obviously, the Porsche European Open, he just won that one. Okay. But here, here are the other events that they're counting as the European Tour. The WGC FedEx St. Jude Invitational, so WGC event, the 148th Open Championship, the US Open, the US PJ Championship. The Masters, the WGC Dell Technologies Match Play, and the WGC Mexico Championship. So everything that he's played in has been co-sponsored except the Porsche European Open. And he now finds himself in 16th place. And he, he's not the only one from the PGA Tour that's kind of uh, serving this way. You've got Xander Shoffley at 10th, and he's only played in one tournament. It was just the Porsche European Open. That's the only other European, the true only European tour event that he's played in. And he's in 10th place. And then you've got uh, Kevin Kisner, who's in seventh place. And uh, it's he's only played in one other official European tour, European tour only event. But he's sitting there in seventh place and has only played in eight quote, you know, air quotes, eight events. So you've got Casey, 
who's played in eight events, and you've got Kisner in eight events, and you've got Xander Shoffley in eight events. All within the you know top sixteen of of the race to Dubai. So uh, just just somewhat interesting. I know that we probably don't talk enough about the European Tour here, but um, yeah, I just found that to be completely interesting. But anyway, getting back to the topic at hand. So we had Matt Kuchar, who did play in the uh, the Porsche European uh, Championship. And while he was uh, over there, he had a situation where he hit his ball into a waste bunker. And according to the new rules of golf, we can remove loose impediments. Well, Matt Kuchar went about removing loose impediments, uh, a lot of loose impediments, a lot of small little pebbles. Um, but, you know, it's they had a referee right there. It was in the rules of golf, and it upset a few folks. So I wanted to sort of get into to this concept of the I, I I saw two particular individuals and I won't drop their names, but they were they were discussing that that it may be within the rules of the game, but somehow or another Matt Kuchar was sort of breaking the spirit of the game, um, not playing according to the spirit of the game, and that is um, something that. I have a really hard time trying to understand where they're going. You get it. You know, they're trying to say that we all of us should somehow or another have some kind of a feel and respect for this great game, and it is, and somehow or another hold ourselves up to a different standard. And that is somehow or another supposed to be the spirit of the game. So the rules say this, but don't obey the rules. Somehow or another apply a different level and play according to the spirit of the game, which is apparently above the, you know, the base rules of the game. And we're supposed to somehow or another know all this. Like, I don't know how many uh, loose impediments Matt could have removed for him to still be playing within the spirit of the game. Um, but it was a very interesting uh, discussion, and it caused me to sort of spin out and think about when it's a slippery slope, right, when we talk about spirit of the game. Because if you look at, like I look at a, like a Bernard um, Langer, right? Bernard Langer um, and that long putter. Now, it's within the rules of the game as long as he doesn't anchor it. But it's still, is it, is it outside the spirit of the game? I, I don't know. I mean, it, it seems to me, you know, close. It's within the rules. I mean, if it's against the rules, then he can't do it, and he's being allowed to do it. So it must be within the rules, but is it within the spirit? I would like for these individuals to make sort of comments about this. Is that within the spirit of the game? It's just so hard to judge these kind of a thing, these kind of things. And then let's talk about uh, equipment, right? You've got equipment manufacturers that are just absolutely pushing it to the end you know, using technology to push the performance of these clubs absolutely to the very far extremes of what is allowed within the rules to give you as big a, as big an advantage as possible, right? And now we've got um, flight scope and track man. We've got all these different technologies to kind of help us learn our swing in a much different way, in a much more efficient and better way. Is that within the spirit of the game? Some would, some would probably argue not that it is not. So I'm just having a real hard time. I, 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 gotta, I hate the term, the spirit of the game. If you don't like what some folks are doing, then make a rule that makes it, that clarifies it. Otherwise, this whole concept, this whole discussion of, you know, breaking some sort of spirit of the game code doesn't do anybody any good. I mean, is, is a ball that, that flies better in the wind right? That goes straighter. Is that within the spirit of the game of golf? I, I just, right? I, I mean, high performance shafts, they're, they're not hickory anymore, right? We don't even steal anymore. Now we've got this, this high tech graphite shaft that have tolerances that are so tight, right? It used to be when, when you came out with, with graphite, there was the tolerances were so wide that you still had to try a bunch of different shafts to figure out which one you had, right? It was still sort of digging it out of the dirt because 
the graphite shafts just weren't very good. The tolerances weren't very tight. Now they are so tight and so well made that from one shaft to another, um, it's really easy to, to have a consistent shaft. Is that within the spirit of the game? Because you're not getting the same performance out of Hickory. I, I don't know. So that part of it just kind of bothers me. I, what, what do you think? Is there a spirit of the game? I mean, it's not like football, right? We have, if you look at football, and we'll use it as an example, football has a great big rule book. We all kind of know what those rules are. And everybody plays. Well, arguably, like whenever they do a replay, right? If you sit there and watch the, the O-line and the defensive line kind of go at it, you can pretty much call holding every single play. And if it's not called, then it's not breaking the rules, right? It's still breaking the rules, but they didn't get caught. But that's okay. I, I guess that's okay. So you've got cheating going on like crazy in football against the rules, breaking the rules, doing all that. Now, now come to, and because we expect the referee to call, right? Call an infraction on us. We're not calling the infraction on ourselves. Where and in golf, it's a cool sport in that a lot of times when we're out playing and, and nobody's really around to watch us, we're all scattered about chasing our balls. We have to call rule infractions on ourselves. There's no referee there to tell us whether we did or whether we didn't. Now, I, I, I did find it interesting. There's a couple things that I, I didn't know in, in one of the discussions that, that came about. Um, I, thought, um, I thought that rules were rules in golf. And I, I think it was a trip that was talking about it on the Golf Channel where he was talking about how he called over an official and the official made a ruling. And so Tripp played it according to that ruling. And it turned out that the, that the referee was wrong, that the rules official was completely wrong, but he still wasn't penalized because he had listened to the rules official. I honestly did not know that. I didn't know that a rules official could make a ruling and then that ruling stood whether it was right or wrong. I thought that the rule would apply and you know, that the, you know, the official would just get in big fat trouble, you know, and have to go back to, you know, golf rules school or whatever it is. Uh, so I found that interesting. And that's somewhat along the lines of football. If a referee makes a mistake and they don't really see enough in, in a replay to overturn it, then that's it. Or if a referee forgets to call something or doesn't see something or was looking elsewhere or blanked and holding happened and he doesn't call it, then that's not a penalty. Uh, whereas in, in golf, other than if apparently if a rules official comes over and makes a ruling and changes the rule on you. But if we're alone and we're out there and we're doing the best we can, that's a weird thing though, right? If we're out there playing and doing the best we can, say in a club championship, and we go ahead and, and make a ruling, we all discuss amongst ourselves and we make a ruling and we go, um, and then it turns out that we've broken that rule, then we get penalized for that after the fact. Um, but that is golf. We call infractions on ourselves. We have to be okay with what we're doing and how we're playing. In the case of Matt Kuchar, he knew the rules. He talked to an official. An official was there, and he began to remove loose impediments from a waste bunker. And I have absolutely no problem with any of it. And I don't think that we can sit around and start making judgment calls based on the spirit of the game. So I, I'd love to know what you think. The spirit of the game just seems too, too fluffy, too difficult to, to, get, to get our heads around, to, to agree upon. Everybody's going to have a different opinion. Uh, and it, it just doesn't seem like it's something worth, uh, something worth pursuing. So I'd love to hear your comments on that. Um, again, Aaron Stewart from Data Access Golf. Thank you for listening. Um, let me know how you feel about the spirit versus the rules of the game. And we can talk some more about it and bring up some different examples for sure. Um, it is interesting how Matt Kuchar seems to be in the middle of all this controversy this year from Mexico on, right? He's had quite the year, quite an eventful year. Uh, but as this year comes to a close, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's listened this season. I really appreciate it. It was tough going to start. Um, starting a podcast is never easy and you don't know. Uh, it's very hard to believe that you have anything to talk about or if you have anything of value to talk about. 
I really appreciate all the comments, all the questions, all the support. I appreciate the guests. Um, really, I mean, Fred Shoemaker was the, the main guest of the entire year. And I've definitely milked that out like crazy because I, I find him to be absolutely brilliant. I, and thank you to, to all of all my friends that I've mentioned that I've worked with and played with. It's been a fun first year for sure. And if I don't uh, talk to you guys until Thursday, we will be in season two. But until then, this is Aaron Stewart saying better data always means better golf. And we'll see you in 2019, 2020. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com. And we'll see you on the next episode.